are my 11 top spiritual practices for new earth and ascension training for the now. It's a new earth now and the frequencies are increasing on planet earth, which makes spiritual awakening more available to more people. Plus more people are awakening. So that adds to the collective and makes it easier for us. Now we still have to do the work and there's new, with these new energies comes new challenges also that we have to take into account. But it's not like the old days where you needed like, like at least 10 years at the foot of the master being the servant and, and that whole process. We can dive right into it more easily. We also have the technology to aid us, news information, and availability to more teachers and stuff like that. So before I get into the, my top 11, I wanted to give an honorable mention to things like old traditions, religions, for example, old spiritual religions, spiritual doctrines, following gurus or teachers. Now in New Earth, we recognize more than ever that the guru or the teacher is within and the learning of the lessons outside of ourselves is more what we create, our reality. The, the guru is within. That doesn't mean that you can't have outside teachers. I do. That doesn't mean you can't follow a guru and all, all that kind of stuff. So let me dive into the top 11 now. And if I'm missing something, please comment them down below. These are my top 11. I'm not including every possibility. So number 11 I have is working with water. Water is the element of uh, intuition and, and emotion and water is conscious that's been proven through primarily Dr. Emoto's experiments so doing things like water meditations water clearings taking sacred baths and, and just working with the frequency of water is one of my top 11 spiritual practices that comes in number 11 so we're going 11 to 1 here so number 10 is work with gemstones and grounding so where's water you know, is, is water. <laughs> Gemstones is, is really about the earth and understanding the earth and understanding the sacred geometry within the earth because within the earth is a, is a reflection or a parallel of what's happening in the universe and the universe is basically consciousness and basically spirit or, or that's its origins. So, you know, doing things like working with crystals, gemstones and, and all that stuff is, is part of it. So number nine it's nature. Nature is a great tool for spiritual awakening. It always has been, as has crystals and water, but it's taking, in my opinion, new precedence in these awakening times. So thing is, you learn to feel all the elements. And there's also fire, air, and spirit, right? Um, going out into nature, you can start to feel the flow. You, you can start to get healing through this flow, because in this world we're subject to a lot of technology, a lot of um, Wi-Fi and cell phone you know, signals and all that kind of stuff. The nature can clear that. You can connect through nature to source. By the way, can you guys guess what my number one is? Especially you guys that know that know me. Comment that down below now and see if you're right. And I'll give you a little clue here that all of these practices, they're not, you don't need to do all of them. That Not all of them are for everybody, except number one, or maybe number two also. All right. Anyway, moving right along, number eight would be things like science and technology. Yes, that's a spiritual path. Quantum physics particularly gets a gold star or an asterisk. And Years ago, I read a book called The Tao of Physics by, I can't remember the author's name, Frechkoff, is it? Or probably butchering his name. <laughs> and anyways, in this book, he's talked about how science, particularly quantum physics, is going to prove what the ancient mystics and masters have known all along. And it's starting to do that. So science, technology, quantum physics is absolutely a viable spiritual path in this new earth understanding things like artificial intelligence also and technology and and we can utilize these as tools to help us to uh, understand more, more spiritually enlightened states and things of that nature. Number seven is shamanic practices, indigenous practices, things like, like shamanic journey, shamanic healing, energy healing, working with plant medicines, not for everybody, but 
That is a viable spiritual path in this new earth, learning how to influence the weather, influence natural law. We can even argue things like hermetics and alchemy, some of the Western esoteric practices that help us understand natural law. Even systems of magic or ceremonial magic, we can argue under that um, umbrella also. Number six is shadow work integration and subconscious reprogramming. The truth of the matter is that you are spirit. You can't get more spiritual than that, but our programming, our conditioning, traumas, things that get stuck in the subconscious mind, block us from that understanding and rob us of our power and rob us of our connection to spirit. And that's why it's such an important part, especially in today's spirituality. So I'm gonna flash a video of five very powerful shadow integration exercises. Do your subconscious shadow work, do your reprogramming. That can be a spiritual path unto itself. Number five is manifestation, law of attraction, understanding that everything is energy. And when you change your vibration, it changes what you create. It changes the energy around you and therefore it changes your reality. So the earth plane is the perfect teacher. It's fractal. Science, quant going back to quantum physics and science, is starting to prove that. And the mind is an energy, well, the heart's the energy generator and the, the mind is the transmitter receiver. So it's our energy that influences our reality, influences reality around us. So it's the perfect teacher and one of the most valuable spiritual lessons you'll ever learn as a spirit having a human experience is the ability to consciously manifest your reality. So number four is working with your spiritual team, your guides, your angels, the ascended masters, your extraterrestrial guides and the extraterrestrial helpers or interdimensional guides and beings, etc. Channeling, trance work, self-hypnosis, all these things are very important in my view to our overall spiritual good health, well-being, and to follow and move forward in our spiritual path working towards enlightenment. Number three is learning mastery of energy. And that um, kind of links in with law of attraction. That includes emotions. And in order to master energy, there's practices that will be very beneficial. Learning yoga or qigong, for example, is, is, a, is exercise. Um, I'm not mentioning this in, in the top 11, but I'm being reminded to say that taking care of your body is an important spiritual practice unto itself. So doing things like yoga, having direct energy experiences, or in other words, being a able to consciously feel and channel energy, and with intention and breath work, you can do that. Now, this also includes emotions, learning how to you know, be the observer of your emotional reactions, and then you, you start to learn how, how to shift those reactions. That's also part of shadow work and, and, and subconscious reprogramming. So all these steps kind of link in. But the idea is we want to cultivate the ability to feel the flow or to feel energy and then learn how to direct that. So energy healing, Reiki, and healing ourselves is all part of that mastery of energy. And with that, we can also argue in sacred sexuality also, as, as sexual energy is a thing. You know, it's part of our spirit, even though it's part of our physical body. So learning how to channel that energy uh, through things like Tantra and other practices is a viable spiritual development practice. By the way, we cover all these topics here on the Medium channel. This is about New Earth spirituality, this channel. It's the spirituality behind the message or behind the practices of mediumship and psychic sensing. So, and also, we have an inner core group where we dive deeper into all these topics called Spirit Mind Family and do, and do frequency channeling to help you to raise your vibration and frequency to accelerate your spiritual growth safely. So we'll leave information on how to join that above. So anyway, number two, so we're getting back to the top two. Number two is heart-brain coherence, or I should broaden that and say, learning how to work with and expand the frequencies of the heart. Heart-brain coherence is one way of doing that, a very powerful way that 
utilizes science as well as ancient spirituality. And literally, they have it down to a science. And this is why I've been saying for a while, this is going to be the top or one of the top spiritual practices of the 2020s and 2030s. So basically what that means is that our hearts are the largest electromagnetic generator in the body, and the hearts become coherent when we feel things magnified emotion of gratitude, love, appreciation, um, compassion. The heart's the largest electromagnetic generator. The brain's number two. So the heart's the generator. The brain's the transmitter receiver. So when you're able to cultivate these emotions, you blend the brain. And, and when the heart and the brain become coherent, then we become coherent with spirit and we open up to these higher gifts and higher abilities. So very, very important. That's why it's my number two. We'll leave some information above to dive deeper into that practice so that you can master it and you can accelerate your growth that way. So number one, and some things will never change is meditation, presence, also prayer. So the, the, you know, the act of prayer activates our spirit also. Um, but meditation always has been and always will be the most important spiritual practice because we need to learn how to still our mind, still ourselves in order to be able to start to connect with the higher levels of spirit, to feel the subtle energies and to be able to basically make all these other 10 spiritual practices and disciplines work for you. That is what I have for you. So meditate, do your heart-brain coherence. And if you want to learn more about, uh, about spiritual awakening, here's the top signs that you're having a spiritual awakening and how to do it. So check out this video here. I love you, and I'll see you at the next video. Namaste.